the most important lesson that I've learned is that we need resources in business. And most people think uh, the most important resource is capital or money. But I feel the most important is human resources. Maybe because in my space, without people, without the team that I have, mm. we were not uh, we were not going to be able to make Tosha success. And the second thing is we need to be patient in business. You know, when I started the business, I thought, oh, I'm going to start Tosh Detergents. It's going to do well. We'll sit on the shelves and then I'm going to be a multi-millionaire. And mm. it doesn't work like that. There are just so many uh, components and elements that comes with being a business owner and being an entrepreneur. So patience, but remember your why. Remember why you started and it will always wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, good day and welcome to another session of Women in Leadership with V. Women in Leadership with V is brought to you by Diversity SA. Diversity SA is a management consulting company in diversity, equity and inclusion. And it does training, facilitation and speaking. And today for this episode, we've got Rufuno Rasisi a businesswoman who's been winning award after award under the brand Tosh Detergents. Rufuna, welcome to the session. Who is Rufuna? Um, Rufuna is an entrepreneur, like what you have started uh, saying. Uh, Rufuna was born and bred in Venda, the dusty streets of Venda. I relocated to Pretoria to further my studies and that's where Tosh was also born. So I'm the founder and managing director of Tosh Detergents, a, a company that manufactures quality household cleaning detergents. I've got a background in uh, civil engineering and I've got, I'm a mother of two, a wife and also uh, an aspiring entrepreneur. Uh, aspiring, you're already winning awards. <laughs> You've got such a busy life as a mother, as a, as a wife, as a business owner. How do you balance all these roles? How do you balance your professional and your personal life? I think the most important thing is to settle down and realize that you are being overwhelmed and to come up with a way to manage. For me, that was having a diary. So it was uh, management for me, time management. I had to manage my time to say at this time, this is what I'll be doing and write it down. Account for every hour, every minute of what you're doing. And also, it also helps to also look back to say, is what I'm doing also productive or am I wasting time? So I also have a supportive partner and that has helped me a lot because he will be able to take care of the kids and also, you know, run around in the house if I'm not able to do such. Okay, oh, that's great. You started your business during COVID lockdown, which was for most people, they were closing. But since then, you've moved from strength to strength. What, what is it that you do that is different from others? I think the most important thing was studying the industry that we are in and to ensure that if we are to bring a new product into the market, the most important thing is marketing and branding. So I have to be branded wherever I go. I must make sure that I talk about my product whenever I get a pro whenever I get a chance and to also advertise advertise the product vigorously to ensure that people are aware and know about Tosh detergents. Okay, that's interesting. I, I know about Tosh detergents. <laughs> I've seen you in other platforms and each time you're wearing your, your shirt and you are talking about Tosh detergent. So I think it's a lesson for all of us to market ourselves. The, the retail industry, it's a brutal industry. It's male dominated and it has got its own challenges. How do you cope in such a challenging environment? Um, you know, the retail space, like what you said, it's male dominated who also think that societal standards, where people think that a certain brand belongs to certain people, or if people are to manufacture or produce something, it doesn't have to be female black owned. So just coming into the market or the retail space and fighting that um, those thoughts, it's, it's quite a lot. And when you appear there and you tell them, I'm the owner of this brand, and they realize maybe it's not what they expected, mm -hmm. then it's, it's also a challenge. The other thing is when you get into the space and you find most of the buyers are, are, are male, and when you tell them this is the product that we have brought and we would like to list it, then they take your product and they put it on the bottom shelf. 
and remember it's a new it's a new brand it's a new product that people are not even aware of so it's really difficult for us to to really convince them to say we are still new this is where you need to put up it's almost like they set you up for failure but what we do most of the time is that we must promote twice as much. We mm -hmm. must advertise twice as much so that we get to convince consumers to bend down and get to our product. Okay, that's interesting. Are those uh, promotions uh, paying off now? They are definitely paying off because each time we go for promotions, whatever stock that is on the shelf will be sold out. Oh, okay. yeah. So when you get there and you tell people about the product, then they, they are able to, to then try out the product and it sells. Okay, well, that's great. Most people, when they see someone succeeding in business, they think there must be a formula. Like they want to to hear the formula that you have to add this with that and that, and then voila, you succeed. So, what is your success formula? I think my success story or my success formula is just learning from other people who have gone before me. Reading books like what we were discussing when we started, you must read a lot. You must be hungry for knowledge because it will help you to grow and to succeed. The other thing is also to have a routine because when you study all successful people, they've got routines. Because I feel like when you conquer the day or when you're able to accomplish that which you have set aside to say, this is what I'm going to do, it also gives you a sense of fulfillment and it encourages you to do more. So it's mm -hmm. to just have a routine to stick to it. And also what is also important is that the promises that you make to your yourself keep those promises because internally it does something that no one can ever you know discourage you and, and you can never treat it for anything mm, that's true so talking about routines what does your routine look like my routine would be like I normally get up around 3 uh, every day after three. devotion <laughs> yes 3 a.m. after devotion at 3 an hour and 4 a.m. I go running 4 to 6 I love running and from 6 a.m., come back, prepare myself, and 7 o'clock, my day starts. So I must not miss the first three. So I cannot miss my devotion, my running, and then time to work. Oh, my goodness. You are the second person I had who wakes up at 3. <laughs> Some of us are still struggling with that. But that's interesting. I think the formula is on the 3 o'clock then. <laughs> what advice would you give uh, young women? who aspire to be business owners? I think the advice I can give to them is that start where you are and use what you have. Because most of the young people that I come across, they will always say to you, no, I'm waiting for government funding. If only I had money, if only I had capital, you know, the problem is capital. Start where you are, use what you have. When we started Touch Detergents, we were using a 25 liter bucket in my garage. And now we've got mixing drums. We don't yet have a fully automated machines, but we are supplying leading retail stores. So had we had said, no, we don't have machines, mm. then we would still be where we are. But now with each day we are growing and we see success. Yeah, that's true. I've, I've met several people who say, I'm still waiting for, for government funding. I've applied and it takes two years. Sometimes they don't even start. Mm -hmm. that's, that's quite critical. Um, in preparation to this uh, session, you were also talking about going to Germany. What, what is that about? So Germany handpicked us. We did a course with the Germany Embassy and they uh, loved Torch Detergents, they loved our concept and they've given us an opportunity to go to Germany for two weeks to present our products to buyers in Germany, people who we can collaborate with and people who will be able to also import our products so we are going global. Oh, that's great. That's great. You you recently won the Standard Bank Top Women Award, the Regional Award. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, that <laughs> it was a tough competition. <laughs> uh, come to think of it, it was mm -hmm. uh, twenty women, and we had three minutes to pitch our businesses to okay. the to the panel of judges. And um, what I realized is that most people just want you to tell their story. So with uh, when I went to Standard Bank, I looked at the list, you know, and I googled the women that I was going up against. Okay. But then I realized that I just had to be authentic mm. and tell my story just as it is. And I made it and I won. And with I'm, your story. I'm, yeah, with my story. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so what is the story of Tosh Detergents? I think um, what really resonates with people is the fact that I learned how to make detergents from my mom. Okay. So this is a skill that I had, I knew. I knew how to make uh, detergents. It was something I didn't enjoy while I was growing up because it felt like a chore. Okay. But only to find out that during COVID, that was the one thing that I did so much and it gave me so much peace. 
and I realized that if I'm able to produce quality product, why don't I become the voice and amplify it? Because my mm. mom made detergents. The community knew about it, but no one else knew about it. So I want to change that story. I want people to know about detergent making. I want her voice, her silent mm. voice, to now be amplified through me and oh, through that's Tosh great. detergents. At, at least you're also going international. <laughs> that's good. So your mom's voice is also going to be in you. Um, what are the two lessons that you have learned from life that you can share with us today? I think the most important lesson that I've learned is that we need resources in business. And most people think uh, the most important resource is capital or money. But I feel the most important is human resources. Maybe because in my space, without people, without the team that I have, mm. we were not, uh, we were not going to be able to make Tosh a success. And the second thing is we need to be patient in business. You know, when I started the business, I thought, oh, I'm going to start Tosh Detergents. It's going to do well. We'll sit on the shelves and then I'm going to be a multi-millionaire. And mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. There are just so many uh, components and elements that comes with being a business owner and being an entrepreneur. So patience, but remember your why. Remember why you started and it will always wake you up at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I definitely need to learn that. I definitely need to learn that. There you have it. Uh, that was Rufuno Rasisi. <laughs> and she is winning awards and she continues to win awards. Awards. Watch the space because she's 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 not done yet. Mm -hmm. um, your Just... last word. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, V. And um, people, please, whoever's watching, they can like and follow us on social media at Tosh Detergents. We are on all social media platforms. They can also go to Selected ShopRite and Checker Store, Macro Marketplace. Macro Marketplace is online, so it's national. Okay. Take a lot and uh, spa stores. And also, um, each time, just remember when you want to do a cleaning to pick a Tosh or two. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it for today. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, remember to like us, to share, and to subscribe. Thank you so much. That's it for today. Bye.